Hi everybody, Ashley Bratzel here. I am a Canadian crochet pattern designer. I live in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan with my husband and our three kids. I have been designing patterns since April 2020, which means I'm just about at my fourth year design anniversary. I have over 300 patterns now listed on Ravelry, Etsy, and a few other places, but those are my main spots. So here I am kind of living my dream. I have also been published in Crochet Now magazine twice, which is the UK's number one crochet magazine. And that's kind of a dream come true. All of my patterns are written up for both interlocking crochet and overlay mosaic crochet. When I started designing, all of my patterns were just interlocking crochet, which is where you're creating two layers of mesh and you lock them together so that on one side you are seeing stitches that are hidden on the other side. There's really only two stitches involved the double crochet and then the chain space between and that's where the two layers get woven together so they are locked together to create the image there's no cutting of your yarn you flip your work back and forth I love it it works out pretty fast for me it's a lot of counting both of the techniques involve a lot of counting but the hardest part is the foundation row and it's pretty hard to get past the foundation row and do the easier part if you can't first do the part that's hard so that's the hard part Mm. The other technique is overlay mosaic crochet. Now this is of course a different image, this is Maynome, but I wanted to show you how you're cutting your yarn at the beginning and end of every row. And that is because every row uses one color, and you're not changing colors 50 times in a row. You just use one color and you either do a single crochet in the back loop or a drop double crochet which covers up the previous row. So that's how you get the image, you're either showing the stitch or covering the stitch both techniques. Each stitch you make is either showing that other row or covering the other row. So all of my designs come with both techniques, but sometimes you'll see even a third option. You can actually see all these little dots in the charts that I create. So for interlocking crochet, it's because you don't read that square. So it's basically like gray matter. It just doesn't exist. When you translate that to overlay mosaic crochet, you do read every square, which means that we are recreating those dots. This is mosaic crochet. You can tell by the back where it's just stripes because I've done a row of this and a row of that. So you don't have to have these dots in the chart for overlay mosaic crochet. But when I started designing, I didn't change the charts. I drew one chart and then I wrote it up for interlocking crochet and overlay mosaic crochet. Nowadays, I just do one chart for interlocking crochet. Then I save it and I change it a bit so that it's solid and I write it up for overlay mosaic crochet. If it was an old pattern that showed all of these little dots, I've been going back and adjusting it, getting rid of all the little dots, and then I'll have the adjusted overlay mosaic crochet version. And that's what happened with these gnome squares. The original gnome squares have dots all over them on both techniques, and then I updated it to include the solid. But there's actually nothing wrong with the dotted option. It saves you yarn, your piece can sometimes be a bit more flexible, and some people actually really like the way it looks. Plus, that is how it was originally designed. So I keep all three files. The gnomes, for example, have the interlocking crochet, the original overlay mosaic crochet version, which has dots all over it from the interlocking crochet mesh being shown, and a third solid overlay mosaic crochet version. New patterns that I design, such as the Celtic knots, never came with a dotted version. However, ah, just to make it fun, when I designed these Celtic knots, the squares for interlocking crochet, are done from the bottom up because that's easy. You know, you make a square done. The mosaic crochet version, that's this one, was done from the center out. Because when you work from the center out, you don't need to cut your yarn, you carry it up in the corner, and then you don't have any ends to deal with at the end when you're trying to join all these squares into a blanket. But some people said, that center out version is a little bit complicated for me, I don't really like it, or, hey, I really wanted to use the Tunisian mosaic crochet technique for this square, which I wanna work from the bottom up. When you use Tunisian mosaic crochet, I don't know if you've heard of this technique before, and I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but that's how I say it. You don't cut the yarn because with you have this hook that you just keep all the yarn on, sort of like knitting. You get to the end and then you, you know, you have all your stitches on there and then you close off that row and you come back to the beginning. So you don't have to cut your yarn because then you just do the next row back and forth, which means that we needed a bottom up version of the square. So I did create that. So you have three options with the Celtic knots as well, but it's because there's the original interlocking crochet squares with the dots because that's how the technique works. Then you have the center out mosaic because that's how I designed it. Then you have a bottom up mosaic 
because there's other techniques that want to be used. If you do the bottom up, you can see this when I have a thick border, it's because I'm covering up all those cut ends in an envelope border. So basically, that's my video saying, hi, I'm Ashley. I'm cold because it's winter here in Saskatchewan and this cold room is not insulated. So I am going to be done for today. I don't even know if you can see. Every now and then I can see my breath popping up. <laughs> it's chilly, but we're Canadians. We don't care, right? Hmm, I'm a bad Canadian. I whine all winter long. Thanks for being here. Thank you for all the ways that you support me. It truly means the world to me when I see my art turning into your crochet things. Thank you for all of the comments, the likes, the shares. There are some of you who have been supporting me since I started this, and I am so, so thankful for you. Let's continue getting to know each other, and I'm going to stick around. I hope you stick around. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Thank you for all the ways that you do support me already. If you're not sure how else to support me, subscribing to my YouTube channel, watching my videos, trying out my tutorials, buying patterns, looking at the free patterns on my website. These are all good ways to support me. Sharing links to my website or to my videos or tutorials, telling people I have cool blanket patterns, showing off your blanket, saying actually designed this. Those are all the best ways to support me. Sending me messages telling me I'm cool. I'm not going to decline those either. Okay. So thank you. And here's to many more years to come.